friends, it's Miss Stern. Are you ready for another story? We're going to read a biography that I think you know is about somebody's life, a real person. And the, the man is called Jacques Cousteau. And his biography is called Man Fish. Just by looking at the cover um, illustration, can you make a guess about what he was famous for and what he loved to do? So let's read to find out about him. Are you ready? Here we go. Bubbles rising through the silence of the sea, silvery beads of breath from a man deep, deep down in a strange and shimmering ocean land of swaying plants and fantastic creatures, a manfish, swimming, diving into the unknown, exploring underwater worlds no one had ever seen and no one could ever have imagined. Our story starts many years before in France with a little baby boy born under the summer sun. His parents named him Jacques. From the very beginning, little Jacques loved water. The way it felt on his hands, his face, his body, and water made him wonder. He wondered why ships floated, why he floated, and why rocks sank. Do you wonder about that too? One day, Jacques read a story about a man who hid underwater by breathing through a long tube. Jacques tried it and discovered it was impossible. He dreamed that someday he would be able to breathe underwater for real. At night, Jacques dreamed he could fly with the birds among the clouds with his arms stretched out like wings. Jacques spent his days playing, experimenting, and creating. He wrote little books that he illustrated with his own drawings, and he was fascinated by machines. He studied blueprints and built a model of a crane that was as tall as he was and actually worked. I bet you can build some great things too. Movies fascinated Jacques too. He wanted to know how they were made, how the cameras worked, and how chemicals made pictures appear on the film. Jacques saved his allowance penny by penny until he had enough to buy a small home movie camera. The first thing he did was take it apart and put it back together. Then he began to film everything around him. That sounds like fun. He put his brother, cousins, parents, and friends in his movies. He dressed up as a villain with a painted on mustache and made some very villainous films. Jacques was always the star, the director, the writer, and usually the cameraman. Do you like to take pictures? When Jacques finished school, he joined the French Navy. His ship sailed around the world and everywhere he went, he filmed what he saw. In China, he filmed men catching fish with their bare hands. They held their breath underwater for many minutes. Jacques wondered what that would be like. One day at the beach, a friend gave Jacques a pair of goggles with rubber frames and glass to look through. Jacques wore them into the ocean. 
Have you ever worn goggles under the water? Beneath the water, he was surrounded by silvery green forests of sea plants and fish he had never seen before. Everything was silent and shimmering. It was a whole new world. When he came up, he saw ear, cars, people, buildings, and telephone poles. Once again, he went below into the magical underwater world. At that moment, Jacques knew his life was changed forever. Hmm. His eyes had been opened to the wonders of the sea. Jacques and his friends, Philippe and Didi, began to dive together. They experimented to see how long they could stay underwater and how deep they could go. Jacques created a waterproof case for his camera so he could film the amazing kingdom he and his friends were exploring beneath the surface. They made rubber suits to keep themselves warm and flippers to help them kick better. But Jacques wanted to stay down longer than one breath at a time. He realized he needed to take more air with him, enough air to explore the mysterious depths and vast expanses of the ocean, to swim through the sea as free as a fish. He wanted to become a man fish, and he began to work on just how to do it. What do you think he'll do? On a warm summer day, Jacques stepped into the blue Mediterranean Sea with his new invention. He called it an aqualung because aqua means water and our lungs are part of our body that holds the air we breathe. Below the surface, Jacques swam and glided and dove. He did flips and somersaults. He stood upside down on one finger and laughed bubbles into the sea. That sounds like fun. Jacques could breathe beneath the water. Now he could swim across miles of ocean, his body feeling what only, what only seals had felt, his eyes seeing what only fish had seen, the water made him feel like he was flying, just like in his dreams. Jacques had done it. He had become a man fish. Do you know how to swim? Remember, always go with an adult. Jacques was ready to explore the oceans of the world. He needed a boat and found a big old wooden navy ship named Calypso. In a year, he turned it from a warship into an explorer ship. Jacques, Philippe, and Didi gathered a crew, their aqualungs, their hopes, and their dreams, and set off to explore the inside of the sea, to film a world that no one had ever seen before. On their journeys, they dove deep into a seascape of plants. Green and purple prickly plants, red branchy plants, spongy plants, wispy feathery swaying plants, slow dancing to the rhythms of the sea. They discovered plants that could feed you, plants that could poison you, plants that looked like fish, and fish that looked like plants. Their cameras captured camouflage scorpion fish, ugly as toads with poisonous spines. Dorados, brilliant shining fish that glowed the color of emeralds, that's green. Sapphires and rubies. Checkerboard fish with red and white checks 
from head to tail. Deep down, they discovered a kingdom of giant rays, fish that fly through the water with wings that swim. They came face to face with a fish as big as a truck, with long fangs, lips like giant tires, and huge saucer eyes. They called it the truck fish. On the bottom, they found pink ghost crabs with eyes on long stalks buried so deep in the sand that they looked like a garden of eyes, and flute fish with heads like horses and bodies the shape of tubes sticking out of rocky openings with pencils in a cup, like pencils in a cup. They swam with giant whales, hitched rides on sea turtles, and made friends with porpoises with shining eyes and smiling faces. They filmed fierce and frightening sharks, so strange and dangerous, Jacques and his crew had to build cages, not for the sharks, but for themselves, so they could make their movie without being eaten. Oh. Everywhere the Calypso went, Jacques and his crew made films of what they saw. Films that played in movie theaters. Films that played on TV. Millions of people all over the world discovered the wonders of the sea for the very first time with Jacques, Philippe, Didi, and their adventurous crew. After Jacques spent most of his life making movies about the sea, he saw something happening, something shocking. Plants that used to be alive and healthy were being poisoned. Fish were sick and dying. Jacques saw that people, without realizing it, were slowly killing the sea and its creatures by dumping garbage and poisonous chemicals into the ocean he loved so much. Jacques knew what he had to do. What do you think he's going to do? He had to make movies, movies to warn people, movies to save the sea. Jacques also spoke to presidents, to kings and queens, to people all over the earth, asking them to help save our oceans, our planet. And he spoke to children. Jacques dreamed that someday it would be you, exploring worlds never seen, never imagined, whole new worlds, silent and shimmering, worlds that are now yours to discover, to care for, and to love. Did you like the story? He really did some amazing things. Now here's some things you could try. If you have a camera available to you, maybe you can take some pictures or videos about some of the things you love to do. Do you have an aquarium nearby? Maybe some of the grown-ups in your family would take you to visit an aquarium and see some of the wonderful sea life there. If not, ask a grown-up if they could help you find a tour of an aquarium on the internet. The last thing you could do is to draw pictures of beautiful fish that you think um, would be fun to see and write a story about them. So until next time, my friends, happy reading. Just a quick word to the grown-ups in the house. If you use the tab above to go to my website, I'll put some links on there for some um, underwater things that you might enjoy with the kids. And thank you for subscribing to my channel. Until next time, happy reading.